Something awesome happened earlier this week and I had to record a video to talk to you guys about it. A couple of months ago, I made a video when Haas released their new CNC machine that was designed to compete with Sile. I said that was a fantastic thing because I love competition in this market, in this little niche within, within machining. Well, Tormach has just announced their own Sile competitor. I was so hoping they would do this. I knew they had a big project in the works. Honestly, I thought it was a Slant Pro MX, like a nicer lathe, which I would still appreciate, Tormach. But the fact that they released a Sile competitor brings me no end of joy. But I think there are some things that we should look at. So let's first start by looking at the three different machines that are in kind of this price point. The price point I'm talking about is between, let's say, $30,000 and $50,000. Up until like two years ago, basically there was nothing in that price range. Your only option was to find a used machine, like a used VF2, or maybe you could get like a, a fairly new mini mill or TM machine from Haas. On the low end of that, you had the Tormach 1100 MX, which was sitting around $30,000 and frankly wildly overpriced for, what, for that machine. And then above that price, like I said, the cheapest thing you could get was something like a Haas Mini Mill or a TM series machine. There wasn't anything in that gap until a little company called Sile came along. Sile released their X7 and their X5 machines. Uh, they were in the 40K range and they dominated. They were far better than the Tormach and pretty competitive against something like a Mini Mill or a TM. Frankly, the value they were providing at the price point was fantastic. The problem is they're a Chinese company, which some people have security concerns about, which are valid. Um, I think more importantly, there are supply chain concerns. For example, if there were any political strife between the US and China, you may lose your ability to get spare parts. And just the support network that Sile had kind of sucked. So I don't think the other companies took them all that seriously. I, none of the Haas and Tormach didn't have any machines that they were competing with, so Sile had a chance to grow and to get popular. Once they started getting popular, they made a deal with Mr. Titan of the Titan CNC Academy, where now Titan is providing U.S. support and distribution for the Sile machines. While that doesn't fix some of the security and supply chain issues, what it does do is it makes U.S. support for Sile's not suck anymore. Plus, the big name celebrity promotion made them a little bit more legitimate in, I think, the eyes of Tormach and Haas. Earlier this year, Haas released the DC-1 Drill Center. It's a little bit harder to compare the Haas DC-1 against the Sile and the Tormach as it is to compare the Tormach to the Sile. It's a little bit of an outlier, but when it comes to its target market, I think it is in the same class. So I'm going to consider it the same level of machine. So... Let's start by looking at the Sile. There's a couple different levels of Sile. I believe the X7 is probably the fairest to look at. You used to be able to get full pricing online, but it says it starts here at $34,000. I was minutes away from placing a PO for one of those. And after I spec'd it out and included a rotary phase converter, which I needed, it came to about $45,000. So for about $45,000, you get a well-outfitted BT30 machine. Um, I believe my quote still had the 12K RPM spindle on it, the epoxy granite casting, wireless probing, chip conveyor, kind of all of the normal bells and whistles that you would expect on a machine like this. Now, one thing to note about the Sile machines is they rely a lot on name brand parts. They have the, the Schneeberger, the um, Schneeberger casting, THK rails. You can option um, Fanuc controls or Heidenheim controls in addition to Heiden, Heidenheim or Fanuc uh, servos. And so I, I think the reason Sile does that is because they know they're a Chinese company and so they need to kind of like to sell into the U.S. They need to get the legitimacy of those bigger, well-known, very well-respected brands. So the Sile machine, actually, there's a pretty good percentage of it that is like German and Japanese. Now let's go to the Haas machine. So the Haas machine, they advertise it as starting at $40,000. But if you've ever priced out a machine on the Haas website, you'll know that kind of falls apart really quick. So 10K spindle, we'll stick with that. We add probing. 
And that already brings us up to 45,000. And we're going to add on high speed machining because, of course, we are. That's basically just built into the price at this point. Um, and I think we'll leave everything else as is. We're not going to put any bells and whistles on this. And we come up to 50,000 on the Haas machine. Now, this machine does have 21 tools in the ATC instead of, I think it was 12 on the Sile. Yeah, 12 on the Sile, though you could upgrade that. It is also a much heavier machine. This is not epoxy granite, it has a cast iron frame. And the cast iron frame weighs like 7,000 pounds as opposed to the three or 4,000 pounds of the sile. So honestly, I don't know how comparable they are in rigidity. I don't know how to compare them uh, apples to apples since they are two completely different things. Here's the fun part though. The Haas machine from the American company is made in China. It is a, a white labeled Chinese product so the Haas machine, because it does not have those high-end imported German and Japanese parts, the Haas machine is more Chinese than the Chinese style machine. So there's a fun twist for you. Now with the Haas machine, I don't think you'd have some of the same security issues that you'd have with the style. You would also have the Haas support network and the Haas supply chain behind it. So I think that really mitigates a lot of the risk of it being a Chinese machine. And really the only downside is if you just want to support American companies making things in America. So this brings us to the Tormach machine. And this is why I am excited about it. So looking at the Tormach, again, we have a epoxy granite frame, which is made in the US. Similar horsepower to the Sile, similar RPM range, similar rapids. It comes by default through spindle coolant ready, which is pretty cool. It's got servos, which of course all the other machines we've talked about do, but the other Tormach mills do not. And has a 16 pocket tool changer. Now I assume the casting on this is a little bit lighter than it is on the Sile, so it may be a little bit less rigid there. And by the way, to my knowledge, this machine is assembled in Mexico and not China. Though I'm sure a lot of the components are sourced from China before being assembled in Mexico. So if we start building one of those out, uh, of course we're gonna have a tool changer. Of course we are gonna have uh, flood coolant. You can get everything pre-assembled for an extra like $3,000. But if you're like me, you're not gonna do that. I love how they specifically call out that it has high speed machining, which is solely an attack on Haas. They also point out it has a reasonable amount of storage, unlike the Haas machines. Let's see, we can have probing. It is a little concerning they have an enclosure window kit as a standalone item, and it says it's included for free. I guess, do you get windows if you don't get that normally? All right, and that's everything we need. So when that's optioned out, it comes to $45,000. So basically exactly the same as a well-optioned style, and $5,000 cheaper than the Haas. But don't forget with the Haas, you still need a rotary phase converter and you need to pay for rigging. The one big benefit of Haas is Haas financing is really good. With the Haas financing, in the long run, it may actually be cheaper to get the $5,000 more expensive Haas than getting uh, the Sile or the Tormach on less good financing. It probably depends on your credit and a bunch of other factors. Uh, if you have good credit, I would be willing to bet the Haas is cheaper in the long run because a lot of the times their interest rates are like at inflation. So which machine is the best? I think it depends on your situation. Um, I've never seen a DC one in action. I don't know if anybody's seen a DC one in action at this point. I've never seen a 1500 MX in action, though I do have friends that have seen the 1500 MX in action. I don't think I would ever buy a Haas product in the first generation of it. I would let it mature a little bit. I don't think I'd buy a Tormach product in its first generation. I think I'd let it mature a little bit. The style at this point is a little bit more proven out. And particularly if you're capable of DIYing some stuff yourself, the style is probably still the cheapest option. It's just not the easiest option. In terms of value, I think the style wins if you are willing to accept a little bit of risk about things like supply chain or uh, bad support and like if you can work through technical documents that were translated from a different language the style machine is probably a good machine for you once the Haas machine has had a little bit of time to mature and some of the wrinkles have had time to be smoothed over I think that would be a really good option for anybody who is planning to grow to future Haas machines you'll be able to learn the Haas control you get a relationship with your local rep and while it is going to be the most expensive option on here unless maybe the financing works out cheaper I think there's a lot of value in getting into a ecosystem and like learning and growing with that ecosystem. 
and you can easily step from the Haas DC1 to a DM or a DC or a VF series mill, and there will be basically zero learning curve other than adapting speeds and feeds. You can probably even take some of your existing programs and then run them onto a bigger machine. So if you're planning on sticking with Haas, starting with a Haas seems like a reasonable option, though I don't know why you wouldn't just buy a used mini mill. The Tormach is very interesting. And honestly, if you gave me $45,000 to buy a mill, I might go with the Tormach. If for no other reason than I know it's going to fit through my door, which I don't know if the DC-1 even has drawings that tell you that yet. And I know I can move it around on a pallet jack and it can be unloaded with a lift gate. With a sile, I would have to rent a forklift and try to jimmy it into my shop. Plus, I really like Pathpilot. The Pathpilot controller is awesome. I think the only thing that comes close to it is the Haas controller, and I would still rather Pathpilot over the Haas control. Plus, I like Tormach as a company. Out of all of the machine tool builders that I've worked with, well, I like Pocket NC the best. But after Pocket NC, which doesn't really have a machine in this class, I like Tormach. They're an American company, they're here in Minnesota. And for price reasons, yes, they can't do all their manufacturing here, but they're at least assembling these things in Mexico. I know there is a good support base. Tormach support is awesome. Tormach parts are awesome. It's very easy to get the any replacement components, and they're very reasonable priced. If something goes wrong, they don't require a tech to come out to replace a part that I can replace myself. They don't do dumb things like charging $4,000 for high-speed machining, which the machine is already capable of. They don't charge you an arm and a leg for a reasonably sized hard drive. Plus, if that machine showed up tonight, I could legitimately have it running tomorrow just because I've used Tormach so much. There is one more thing we should probably address, and that's the 1100MX. A lot of people have these. Like, a lot of people, it is Tormach's most popular machine, and it's always been overpriced. You could definitely make money with it, but I don't think anybody really thought it was worth the premium they were asking. There just wasn't any other option. And this is why I like competition. We have options now that are better. Competition is good for the consumer. Did they lower the price on this? I think they might have lowered the price on this. But if we go through here and we strip out everything you don't need on this machine and we just bring it down to basically the bare bones of what I would consider to be a reasonable machine, you want with like the tool changer and a coolant system, but none of the unnecessary things like the $20 printed manual or like the, the waterproof mouse or the $500 monitor. If we take all of that stuff out, I think now with a well-outfitted machine at 30000 I think that was a little bit more before. Oh, we need to add probing. With probing, the 1100MX comes to just over $30,000, which I still think is too much for it. I'd like to see this machine at like twenty-seven or 25000 And I'm not sure they're going to sell many of these machines anymore. I think anybody who's not doing this as a business, who's just kind of playing around, I think they're going to go with something like a 440 or a 770. And anybody who is taking this seriously and does want to start a business, they're just going to go to the 1500. The difference between an 1100 and a 1500, I, mean, I guess $10,000 is $10,000. But I think if somebody was really cash constrained, they would go with just a bare bones 1500 over a well-outfitted 1100. I think this is just a better choice, especially because you can add the tool changer in the field. And DIYing a flood coolant system isn't difficult either. So this might be the end of the 1100MX, or at least the end of it as Tormach's most popular machine. However, if you are looking for your first larger machine, I think in a couple months, there's going to be a whole lot of used 1100MXs on the market. And I... Up until now, 1100s have held their value stupidly well. I bought my 1100 new for $30,000 and I resold it two years later for $27,000. Now granted, I sent a lot of tool holders and fixturing with my machines. So realistically, the machine probably dropped like $5,000 in value. But there was a lot of demand for those used 1100 MXs and so they just didn't drop in value too much. But soon, everybody who has an 1100 but didn't want to go to a Haas or a Sile, they're going to go to the 1500MX and they're going to sell their 1100. So I predict the price of all used Tormox except maybe the 440s is going to drop because everybody's going to be selling their 1100 to buy the 1500. So if you're going to sell your Tormach, I would do it right now. If you are looking to buy a Tormach, I would be looking to buy a used one in six months or so. 
at the end of the day, I do like Tormach, but I think the real winner here is the consumers who are getting more competition in this space. I love that companies are paying attention to this entry level market. All big companies start off as one person or a couple of co-founders working together on something. And those people need tools to be able to do the big things in their industry. If computers were still these giant contraptions that only big companies had access to, Bill Gates would have never been able to start Windows. But because a technology became cheaper and more available to the guy in his garage, he was able to make a really big company and have an impact on the world. In the past couple years, we have started to get that access as makers, as manufacturers, as machine shops. We now have 3D printers. We now have good CNC machines that we can afford on a, a startup budget. And I don't know who the next Bill Gates is gonna be. I don't know what the new equivalent of Windows is gonna be, but I guarantee you right now, there are things happening, but I guarantee you there is people, there is someone, there are multiple people right now that are on their Tormach or their Sile or their low-end Haas and they are working on something that's gonna become a billion dollar company. I believe, and this may sound corny, but I believe that as the world gets better at manufacturing, the world becomes a better place. Not only does the manufacturing industry provide a lot of jobs, it also makes the stuff we need to have the modern world. If you're trying to solve a problem, like let's say clean water in third world countries, yes, there's a lot of logistical and political things that go into solving that problem, but you also need pumps and you need filters and you need wells and all of those things have machines and otherwise manufactured components. If we can make those parts twice as well for half the price, it doesn't solve all of our problems, but it certainly makes it easier. If we have planes that can fly twice as far and use half as much fuel, again, it makes that problem a whole lot easier. Anyway, I am thrilled to see more competition at this price point. I don't know if there's any other companies that are gonna pay attention to it. I think this is pretty much all we get for now unless there is a new startup or Pocket NC decides to release the three axis machine. But I don't see Brother or Fanuc or Doosan releasing a machine at this price point. So I think this is pretty much all we get for now unless there is a new startup. Anybody heard from Vulcan? Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.